This is the exact reason why people with a high GPA and a high MCAT are still not getting interviews and are still not getting into medical school. So the issue that I'm finding with a lot of pre-meds is clinical experience and patient care experience is not the same thing. Even if you guys have a low MCAT and a low GPA, these extracurriculars are really gonna elevate your guys' application. Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be pretty awesome because I'm gonna be talking about every extracurricular activity that I put on my med school application, which ultimately got me into medical school. But if this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Michael, I'm a first year medical student, and make sure to hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, so that we can reach as many pre-med students as possible. All right, so that being said, I'm not gonna waste any more of your guys' time. Let's get into the extracurricular activities that I did in order to get into medical school. So my first extracurricular activity that I wanna to mention to you guys is my main patient care experience that I got as an undergraduate student, as a pre-med student, and it's being an operating room orderly. So I worked in the operating room for four years prior to going to medical school, and it honestly was one of the best experiences that I could have had, you know, trying to figure out if medicine was for me because it didn't require any like outside certificate or license. You don't have to be an EMT, don't have to be a CNA. Um, you just have to like medicine and want to learn more about the operating room and what goes on in a hospital. So if that's you, I would highly recommend looking into becoming an operating room orderly because you're not only going to learn like different skills that you would use as a physician, but you're also going to form relationships with physicians, that can potentially write you letters of recommendation. Now, some of the things that I did in the OR, they taught me how to actually scrub into surgery. So I didn't have any prior experience. I didn't take a course or anything. They literally taught me how to scrub into surgery. And so I've scrubbed into anything from an orthopedic surgery to holding a heart during heart transplant surgery to holding the camera during different like lung surgeries. So. I've seen pretty much every type of surgery there is out there, including neurosurgery, general surgery, you know, uh, urology, all of that stuff I've seen. And it really helps you kind of determine if becoming a surgeon is for you. So if you're interested in becoming a surgeon, this would be a great opportunity for you guys to get firsthand experience before medical school on if this is actually the right field for you. So extracurricular number one was being an operating room orderly. Now the second thing that I did for patient care experience, I was actually a volunteer at a children's hospital in the emergency room. Now in order to volunteer in an emergency room, I don't know if this is a nationwide thing, I'm pretty sure it is, but most hospitals are gonna require you guys to have an EMT license which is something else that I did and I included in my uh, med school application. So getting an EMT license is a really good idea if you guys wanna work in an ER or even volunteer in an ER. If you guys are interested in like working on in other parts of the hospital, then I recommend getting a CNA license, but we'll talk a little bit more on that in just a couple minutes. So as an emergency room volunteer at a children's hospital, you don't really do much. Um, even though you have an EMT license, they actually don't let you kind of go into that scope of practice. So basically all you're doing is taking people from the waiting room, you're walking them back to their emergency room, and then you kind of get them settled. So since I was dealing with children, you know, I would make sure that they were comfortable. Um, the children's ER has a ton of toys, so I'd always go get toys, bring them to the room, just making sure that the kids were comfortable. Sometimes they had, you know, a younger or older brother or sister, you know, that was considered pediatric. So, you know, I'd go get them snacks. Um, and then also you're in charge of like cleaning the toys and then just helping out the nurses if they ask you guys to do anything. Now, since I mentioned it already, let's go into my third thing, which I got an EMT license while I was doing my undergrad. So I did it at a community college and I just took basically like night classes. So for one full semester, I went to the community college three times a week and each time I went, it was four hours. So I was doing 12 hours a week for my EMT license. And even though I really didn't need to get an EMT license, it's really good to show medical schools that you are being proactive and you're starting your medical education early. 
Um, and so even though I was just an EMT basic, um, and if you guys didn't know, there's different levels of EMT. So there's basic, there is intermediate, but they're kind of doing away with that. And then there's EMT advanced, which you actually can't start IVs until you're actually an EMT advanced. So as an EMT basic, I wasn't allowed to do IVs. I wasn't allowed to give certain meds. Um, it's kind of like being a glorified pre-med student, um, just knowing the basics like vital signs, how to splint, how to stop bleeds, um, how to do CPR, just stuff like that is what you're going to learn as an EMT basic. Now, the fourth thing that I did as a pre-med student was get involved in international medical trips. So I kind of got in contact with a medical charity called Liga International. If you guys haven't heard about them, you can check out their um, website. I'll put the link in the description, but it's an awesome organization and it's extremely affordable. It's extremely time friendly because they only do weekend trips down to Mexico and you don't have to know Spanish. If you're a pre-med student, it's such a great opportunity to go down to Mexico and actually see what it's like to provide medical care to people that literally don't have access to it. Now, I'm super grateful that I did this with Liga International because it was actually the topic of most of my interview. Um, everybody that interviewed me because I did the multiple mini interviews, they always wanted to know about my experience you know, in Mexico with Liga International. Um, the other thing is I actually learned Spanish in Mexico prior to doing these medical trips, which is kind of a whole nother story, but I got my major in Spanish of all things. I obviously did my pre-med as well, but the Spanish that I learned really helped me pretty much get into medical school because it connected with so many things that I was doing. I was able to translate while I was working as an OR orderly. I was able to do these medical missions in Mexico. And so it kind of, my, my application told a story. And that's something that a lot of medical students lack in their application is a story. Your guys' stuff is so like, I'm just checking off boxes. And that's the last thing you guys want to do. And so if you guys can connect your extracurriculars with, you know, the passions that you have in life, it's going to make your lives a whole lot easier when trying to explain to these interviewers about your extracurricular activities. So what I would recommend is choose extracurricular activities that relate to patient care, that relate to medicine, because that's ultimately the field that you guys are going into. And it's gonna be a lot easier to actually talk about, you know, medicine and why you got into medicine. And so if you guys can, just try and avoid just checking off boxes. Um, kind of like a side note here. I actually didn't do any research as an undergrad and that's just cause I'm not very interested in research. And so I'm not gonna do research just to check off a box. And I'm really glad that I didn't because what would I say about my research? All right, so the fifth extracurricular activity that I did was I was actually a dialysis clinic volunteer. So funny story, my fiance, her mom is the manager at a dialysis clinic. She's a dialysis nurse. And so it was really easy to get involved in doing some side projects for her clinic. And so if you guys know somebody that has like a clinic or is, you know, subspecialized in something where you guys can easily lend them a hand and maybe do some patient education. Um, that is a great way to get another extracurricular. Now the sixth extracurricular activity that I did was I was actually a Spanish TA during undergrad. And so like I mentioned, I learned Spanish um, before undergrad and I was able to actually major in Spanish. And while I was majoring, I reached out to one of the Spanish teachers and asked them if I could TA for them. And they said yes and the, you know, the rest is history. Now the seventh extracurricular that I did kind of goes along with this whole Spanish theme and it was being a Spanish tutor. So I tutored people in Spanish for the university. This was actually like a university position where they paid me based on how many people I tutored, which a lot of people don't really need a Spanish tutor in undergrad, which kind of surprised me. So I didn't really have to tutor that many students, but I was still able to put it on my resume. Now the eighth thing, which is not gonna be relevant to a lot of you, was I actually served a Mormon mission in Mexico. So that's how I learned Spanish, which ultimately helped me you know, with the rest of my application because I was able to major in Spanish. And then like I just mentioned, I was actually a Spanish tutor, a Spanish TA, 
I used Spanish in the hospital, and then I was able to be a translator for Liga International down in Mexico. So Spanish has really been a big part of me getting into medical school and a big part of my application. Um, obviously, you guys don't need to know another language to get into medical school, but you know, I had a low MCAT and a low GPA, so I was trying to stand out in any way I could. And you know, I learned Spanish before I had the low GPA, so it's not like I had the low GPA and then I went to learn Spanish to compensate for that. That's not how it went. Um, so if you guys do have the opportunity to learn another language, specifically Spanish, because that is probably the most common language you guys are gonna hear in the hospital, then I highly recommend you know, at least learning some basic phrases, um, words, sentences, stuff like that, that will help you become a better physician. Now, the ninth thing that I put on my application was I actually taught Chinese children English through a company called VIP Kid. So I actually got paid for this. Obviously, it was a job. It was just kind of like a side job, but it was pretty cool because you would log on to the website and it would almost be like Zoom or like FaceTime with the students that are in China. And the company would provide like the PowerPoint that you just walk through with them. Um, and they basically mimic what you say. So you say the phrase in English and then they try and say it. And then it's pretty cool because the kids, they start really, you know, forming a friendship with you. And so it's funny because after a while, the same kid will start booking you over and over again. But it was just kind of like a more unique type of thing to put on my application, um, you know, teaching English to Chinese kids. Now, the last thing that I'm going to cover today, I think it's my 10th extracurricular activity, was shadowing. So obviously, you guys need to shadow in order to go to medical school. And so for my shadowing, I actually included some of my work experience working in the OR because I was literally shadowing surgeons every day, anesthesiologists every day, you know, ER doctors in the ER, we'd go down to the ER and get patients for surgery. We'd go to the ICU, so I'd see, you know, the ICU doctors working. But honestly, I just chose a few of the doctors that I was really close with, and I made sure to ask them um, if I could include them for my shadowing hours, and obviously they said yes. But you really wanna make sure if you're in that type of situation where you're working with doctors all the time, you wanna get their permission to put their names on your med school application because what if that medical school contacts them, which is very, very unlikely, you don't want them to be thrown off guard. So just get their permission, they're gonna say yes, and then that way you guys can include those hours as shadowing hours anyways. I also did the more traditional way of shadowing, so I made sure to shadow a family medicine doctor as well as a pediatrician. Thankfully, they were both married, so the pediatrician I actually met in Mexico doing one of these Liga International trips. So you can see how my application all kind of meshes together. And so you can see that that makes it really easy to kind of branch out and connect with other providers, you know, around the United States. But luckily, her husband was a family medicine doctor, so she allowed me to shadow her and her husband back in the States. Um, and we're still super good friends to this day. And she actually wrote me a letter of recommendation. So, so you guys can see that you can get letters of recommendation from a bunch of different routes. You can work in the hospital, you can do volunteering and meet physicians that way. Um, there's a lot of different routes. You just kind of have to be creative and be willing to kind of come out of your comfort zone and try new things as a pre-med. So guys, those are 10 extracurricular activities that I put on my med school application which I always got complimented on from admissions advisors to my interviewers because I had such a comprehensive list of extracurriculars. A lot of them revolved around medicine, which I highly recommend you guys do. And because this video is running a little bit longer, I'm gonna actually make another video talking about clinical experience versus patient care experience. Ultimately, it's the same thing, it's just a semantics thing but you guys need to start getting patient care experience. Clinical experience is the same thing, but if you guys start saying patient care experience, you're not gonna get confused because clinical experience and patient care experience means you guys are actually taking care of patients. And a lot of pre-meds get this confused because they think if they're working in a hospital, that counts as clinical experience, which it doesn't. 
unless you guys are taking care of patients, whether that's, you know, pushing them around in their gurneys to other parts of the hospital, which is kind of what an orderly does, whether you're a CNA in a hospital working with nurses, whether you're an EMT in a hospital volunteering, um, interacting with patients. But if you guys are just like a janitor in a hospital or working at like the gift shop in a hospital or working as like the front desk person in a hospital, those are not considered clinical experience because it's not patient care experience. So just start saying patient care experience and you guys won't get confused on whether what you're doing is patient care experience or if it's not. But I'll make another video going over that so I won't bore you guys right now. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it really um, kind of opened your eyes to the opportunities there are as a pre-med student and you guys had like a good look at what it takes to get into medical school if that makes any sense. Obviously I didn't do everything correctly and there's better ways of doing certain things um, don't be like me and get a crappy GPA and a crappy MCAT because it's going to make your lives a whole lot harder. And luckily I had very strong extracurriculars that supplemented my application, but it wasn't enough. I still had to do a special master's program to prove that I was, you know, smart enough to go to medical school. So with that being said, guys, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next video.